All right, it's Toby from Heavyweight MMA here today with the Battle Giraffe, Kem Ralston, ahead of a big eight-man tourney this weekend. How are you, bro? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. How are you doing? Good, man. So you're moving up from cruiser to super cruiser, eight-man. You've been in these eight-man before. You won the cruiser. Now you're moving up. Um, what what brings you to move up a open weight division, bro? Um, it just, the opportunity for the tournament kind of presented itself about eight weeks ago. Um, I don't want to say it was put together at the last minute, but they, um, they were, yeah, they were just looking for people to fill in and I was trying to get an MMA fight and nothing was really coming through. And so, you know, you got to stay busy. You don't want to have the ring rust or anything. So I was just, I just said, Hey, put me in there, Eugene. And yeah, we jumped in. Nice, nice, man. I just had a look at the, at the little, um, they, 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 they posted the eight guys that are in it, bro. You're in the A bracket with a couple of guys. Uh, who's the key sort of problems you feel amongst those uh, seven fighters? Oh, the key problems. Um, I think there's Rob Dean, who I fought in the in the final for the cruiserweight. Um, yeah, he's a very hard kicker. He's a hard man, so he he will definitely be a key problem. Um, if anything, like uh, like the last time we fought him or how he went in the last tournament, like he's he's he'll he'll. Uh, cause some issues. Then there's Ash Sully, my teammate. It's always an issue when you got to fight a teammate, you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure he'll he'll go hard, and I'll go hard if we have to fight. Like we won't hold anything back. Uh, there's there's another Cameron. I know that the issue is there can only be one Cameron. So <laughs> yeah, just like Highlander, there can only be one. Uh, but he, yeah. I've seen, I haven't met him, but I've seen the seen photos and seen some of his fights. He's quite tall and rangy, like me. So that'll be an interesting fight. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I think there's there's another guy called Rini who Navajo has fought before. Navajo said he's um he's got a lot of power as well. So yeah, this yeah. he's a he's probably he might be like the most powerful guy coming into this into this weight class. So we'll see how that goes if I have to fight him. Man, I'm um, leading up to like an eight man rather than like a, a one off sort of fight. Uh, do you have any more apprehension, any more nerves or something? Because it's a whole different sort of ball game, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's um, I'd say the nerves are the same. Like you, you deal with them as they come. But it's more just there's a few more what ifs in your head. You ask yourself, oh, what if I get this guy first, or what if I get this guy first, and then I have to fight this guy. What if this? What if that? But um, yeah, no, it's all it's all pretty much the same as as it would be just getting ready for a single opponent. Yeah, bro. And how's the how's the training going? You've been over there an age, man. Training at CKB in Auckland. Uh, how long has it been so far? I can't remember about it, a couple of years now, right? Been it's been four and a half years. I first got to Auckland mid January. I think January the twelfth was when I arrived in New Zealand. Yeah. And started this journey. Yeah. It's uh, it's flown by. It's been fast and slow. Bro, uh, I've been overseas for a while too. What sort of what sort of traits have you picked up from the Kiwis, bro? There's always something you pick up when you're overseas. You start to have some habits or some different things. Ooh. probably saying bro instead of mate a lot <laughs> that's the one man I've, I spent like a couple of years working with a guy like closely in Australia who was a Kiwi and I still say bro all the time people think I'm a Kiwi yeah what else bro anything else you don't feel like doing some scaffolding uh, nah, no <laughs> no trades work unfortunately um, what other habits are there maybe a few more beers at night just to yeah. chill out yeah, yeah. um Running on, running a little bit late. I don't. I wouldn't say I'm always late, but sometimes uh, I do run, do run a little bit late, like these guys. Not to say that they're always late, but no, it's all all positive traits. I reckon. If anything, it's just in the training, just the way these guys train. They're very hardy. Like they, um, they come in and they have a purpose when they train. They don't really. They know when to fuck around, but they know when to be serious. That's probably like one of the biggest traits I picked up from them. That's it, man. And so. So um, in your training, bro, is there anything significantly new in the, in the last sort of period of training that you've done or you integrated into your training? Anything different or just the same sort of thing? Uh, obviously, new skills and that, but anything particularly interesting? Um, particularly interesting, I'd say, like, we still kind of trained like it was at MMA fight camp. I'd, uh, I still did a lot of wrestling and grappling. Fuck, we had Craig Jones here for, for the last... He left, I think, maybe two weeks ago. He was here for four weeks. So we were, we were. I was training jiu-jitsu every day and doing like an hour worth of rolling every day with him. But I still got, I still got all my striking in. Uh, one of the biggest things would be 
maybe just training with Mark Timms a lot more. Like he kind of took the the lead role as the coach for this one with me, holding all the pads, game planning, teaching me the new stuff. So I'd say that's the biggest thing is just um, going through the camp with Mark as as the striking coach for it, rather than say like Mike Angov or Doug or Eugene. Yeah, man. And like we talked about the problems in the eight man. What about in the in the gym, man? Like who's the headache in the gym? Who's your kind of nemesis over there? Oh, my nemesis in the gym. Hang on, we're going to have a cat coming into the camera soon. <laughs> That's all right. I can see the fur. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Classic. Um, no, nah, the problem, oh, my nemesis in the gym. Yeah, nice one, Cairo. Put your asshole on the camera. <laughs> my nemesis in the gym. Oh, I got a couple. Yeah. Um, Nate Law. He's a tidy southpaw. Fuck, he's, yeah, yeah. he's a headache. Yeah, he, he's got real stiff, hard shots. Um, if we're doing MMA, it's got to be Brogan for sure. He's such a Brogan Anderson. He will just, once he gets a hold of you, it's kind of, you got to hit the panic button and get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Striking, uh, Navajo and the Bear were like probably my, my biggest sparring partners for this one, for the striking. The yeah. Bear is just a Brando uh, Perichich. I think I'm saying that right, Perichich. It's his... Um, the bears his fight name he, he's just uh he was just coming forwards at me and i just got to get on my bike hit and move and i'm like well fuck this is probably what might happen in the 92 like i'm gonna have a guy who's bigger than me trying to come at me and land some power shots so that's been good and then obviously like navajo sterling he's um he's fighting on the card as well but he's like his credentials and his accolades speak for himself and we just we just have some good some good solid battles and like exchanges in the gym like nothing nothing outrageously dangerous or anything but we just have a good technical rounds Nice, 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 man. Hey, um, so are you are you doing any of the work, like the breathing work and that sort of stuff that I see some of the guys popping up from CKB with Dave Wood? No, no. I, I don't do any, like, kind of extra stuff outside of that. I just stick to my bread and butter, which is getting into the gym, doing the, doing the technical work, doing the conditioning. And then I've started working with Ethos Performance. Um, yeah. They've, they've taken me on as, like, more of a – with more of a tailored programming session so that's probably the other thing that i've added in is just training with them like with the weights yeah. uh so all the strength work and the plyometrics that they've done yeah which is, which has honestly helped a lot like they've it's not really a cookie cutter program they've managed to tweak a lot of things just to specifically suit me bro you mentioned about the mma that you're hoping to get an mma fight man what's the story with that like what what are you plan for like mma obviously you're training it like you said your camp's still involved in grappling you had a last fight in 2022 with Panay. I did pretty well, man. Like, obviously, you must be itching to, to, you know, move up the ranks and, you know, try and get a shot in one of the big organizations, right? Yeah, definitely. That's that's always going to be the goal. Um, yeah, you just got to be kind of smart about it. Um, take take the fights as they come. Obviously, I just got to get through this one. The last time I did the, the eight-man, I was all banged up for ages. So, yeah. try and you know, try and fight hard and try and make it through as unscathed as possible and then, yeah, look for another MMA fight after that. Yeah, that's it, man. So so any any sort of timeline you'd like to work on for the year for MMA or you don't really have a choice? It just depends what comes up. Probably not within the next month after the after the fight. Yeah. Um, just go like body hill, but yeah, I'll, 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 I should be ready to go. I'll just stay fit and keep my yeah. weight down. That's what I mean about the apprehension, man, that you're going to go in. Like, you already know you're going to get banged up, man, just multiple fights in the one night. Good for experience, uh, good for, like, pushing yourself and that, but not so good for <laughs> keeping fit and healing up and all that, right? Nah, not at all. But there, there, there's stuff I can do, like all the ice baths and the sauna yeah. and recovery methods. I'm, I'll, I'll be on top of it. That's it, man. So for the eight man, King in the Ring, eight man, Super Cruiser Attorney, Saturday, tenth of June. Any uh, predictions from you, bro? Mm, expect one stoppage. I'm expecting to get one stoppage in the fight. I won't say all of them, but um, me and Mark have been working on some stuff and just looking at how the other guys fight and just the the game plan I've got. I think I think I can get a stoppage, whether that be quarters, semis, finals. Obviously, I'm obviously I'm going to take it out. I'm confident I will, but there will be a yeah. stoppage in there somewhere. Nice man. Um, what about the um, the plans for 
I mean, you've got your MMA, you want to get an MMA. If you don't, is there any sort of plan to continue with the, the stand-up over there or that's sort of out, you're just waiting to see what happens with your sort of fights in 2023? Uh, fighting's fighting. It'll be anything. MMA, kickboxing, uh, jiu-jitsu tournaments, you know, competition's competition. As they say, no one got worse competing, so anything, anything really. Bro, I can see your Cam Battle Giraffe uh, t-shirt there looking pretty pretty slick um, is yeah. there so people can buy that from uh, over in New Zealand still or you still you still got them in stock or no yeah yeah, yeah they people, can buy it in New Zealand them. yep so look it up if on Insta they, uh, what about you mentioned that you're going to start selling some in Australia at some point right yeah my uh, my PA is going to set up the Shopify so yeah. so we can get it sold internationally um, that'll that'll go. be coming soon I'll get the yeah. beanies going Oh, nice. Ooh, the beanies. Yeah. I got hats right. as well. Bro, it brings up... No, the, no, it brings up the, oh, you got something else. I got shorts as well. These are the fight shorts. I got them printed onto the fight shorts. Yeah, have you got rashes? Labyrinth for yet or not? No, nah, no rashes yet. Um, I'll have to speak to Labyrinth. Maybe yeah. get, the, maybe get the, the prints going. And then I've got active tees as well. So you can be full decked out in the Cam Rouston fight gear and, <laughs> I mean, Battle Giraffe fight yeah, gear, I should say. Exactly. That's it. Man, that brings to, brings to mind the, the rashi I sent you, the Australian Australiana sort of rashi I sent you, Eugene Behrman chopped the, oh. the Australian flag oh. out of it. Fuck up. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, he carries around, like, he calls it his EDC, his everyday carry. He carries around different knives for, like, whatever it's like a stress ball for him like he's got like these yeah. little knives that he flicks in like fidgets with and yeah. um yeah I, I wore that rash guard you had for wrestling one night like a tuesday night and then the next morning at wednesday training i completely forgot like i took it off after training fucking just left it there by accident forgot to take it home with me and then the next morning after the pro training he was like got everyone around in a circle my like, fuck he's gonna give us a speech like what's going on he's like now in this gym there's only one flag, and he's like, "There's only oh, two flags." He's like, "There's only the Maori flag and the New Zealand flag." If I see anyone wearing any other flag, I'm cutting it off. And then he like throws the rash guard on the ground. And he's like, "Whose fucking shit is this?" And I was like, "Oh crap!" And then, and then he's then he throws the patches like he cut the flags out of the out of the sleeve and he throws them on the ground. And he's like, "He's like, fuck this! I don't ever want to see this in my gym again." And I was like, "Oh crap! That's mine." <laughs> I gotta, uh, I gotta think about making a big. Actually, you know, I'm in. I'm in China. I'm sure I can find an Australian shirt. I'm just gonna ship it over to him one day just for fun. <laughs> yeah. Send it to should uh, should send him some kid sizes, and then his kids can wear them, and then that'll that'll. Really <laughs> Whole family. Off. Whole family can have them. Family yeah. of Australian shirts. I love Australia. <laughs> Something like that. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, bro, that, the the next one I'm sending over the uh, the the drop bear one's got no Australian flag on it, anyways, but it's Australiana anyway, so you can wear that one. No, no, <laughs> cool, bro. All right, man. Well, um, good to hear you. You know, raging. You're going to take out this uh, eight man on the weekend. Um, I look forward to having a watch and seeing you take over, man, and and look forward to seeing you in your next MMA fight too, man. So thanks for your time, mate. Easy, no worries. Cheers, Toby. Appreciate cool, it, bro.